Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in to today's Listening Club. Uh, I'm Jenny Stojan and uh, joined with the lovely Andy, and we're going to be listening to my album, The Living Mountain, which is out on Friday. Summer. We walk that's how we Layered that up, didn't we, to, as a bed. Is that what that is? I couldn't yeah. remember what that was. Yeah. It was like the after strum of the dulcimer. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Line on line and hunkered down This wild and weathered place Life remains against the odds Tread careful as we step in time This track's called The Plateau It's the opening chapter of Nan Shepherd's book The Living Mountain Freedom of the well-trod path Against the river's flow His dizzy It's a only playing percussion by me there <laughs> Right here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we were we recorded the album at Clashnetty Art Centre in the Cairngorms National Park. It's like a little old, little old um, granite cottage in an amazing spot. And Andy was upstairs, and I was I was downstairs next to the to the fire, and uh, we were just sat up there with a couple of brushes I think for that percussion right? yeah. <laughs> yeah so we had like a little um, little control room set up at the top of the stairs and then I had various bits of cushion and, and we messing around with them really and the, and the hound yeah the dog who we had to carry up and down the stairs <laughs> you can't go up and down them anymore Step on step, foot by foot, we walk, that's how we... And then that's why most of the percussion is mashed up through uh, amps or stuff in the mix, just to make it sound a bit crunchier and <laughs> it's not very professionally played. <laughs> Should have got someone in, really, but, you know, we wanted no, something a bit brilliant and cheap. Andy. Bit cheap. <laughs> DIY. No way to describe yourself and your talents. Yeah, it is. So all this um, bird song and stuff is is from just outside the art centre, isn't it? Mm. Um, so we shoved a, a zoom. What? Quite most days we went out for a little wander and put the zoom mobile recorder down and left it for a bit, didn't we? And just got got whatever it got. Yeah. And that was through the whole album. Fishers, yeah. unedited. Fishers, forced and falling. Bits of the river nearby. The house was more of a burn, the and the wind yeah. and the birds. You don't There's some good bits where the birds like fly right next to the yeah. zoom mic and. The first uh, pocket piano appearance on the album. Yeah, little synth standard. I love what you've done with the guitar on this one. Kind of sounds really well. This song's called "The Recess." is all about the the dark and hidden parts of the Cairngorms, like the wee bits that you get in and have a good look at. And uh, something about the, the guitar sound you've managed to get on this, I really like. Sounds a bit like you're in a cave. <laughs> Carry downstream as you're taken. This is the last track that I wrote actually. The other 11 came reasonably quickly, and then and this one evaded me for a long, long time until I realised I just needed to go a bit more simple. 
and just double track vocals there. Cool. That was nice when that happened in the studio actually. It just really lit up this track for me. So all these songs, right, they're apart from one all your own words it started but inspired to by a stream and go to yes. yeah. but inspired by Nan yes and Nan's yeah. book for those that don't know who is Nan Shepherd <laughs> she was an amazing amazing pioneering woman who stream and wrote this incredible book The Living Mountain very inspiring little little book never ending Never Back in the 40s or something. Yeah, she, yeah, wrote it in the 40s um, during the Second World War and then it sort of sat in her desk until it was uh, published in 1977 and she self-published it first of all. And this is the first, the first track, the group that features the guest musicians apart from Andy, obviously. Um, <laughs> And, uh, I'm part of the band. I'm in the band. You are team. part of the band. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> Integral part, Andy. Yeah. Make Exploring. things up. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so this has got uh, Sue Ali on cello and Mary Campbell on viola and Grant Anderson on backing vocals. I felt the warming sun. First appearance of the slightly out of tune piano. Mm. <laughs> slightly out of tune, but really great piano. Yeah, I think it really adds something to it. Yeah, the strings were kind of like. Um, we'd listen through the tracks and go, oh, let's do some strings there, some strings there, some strings there. And then. Mapped out a kind of rough idea of what we wanted, and then Sue and Mary just came in and jammed over the top of them, really, with mm. some kind of notes from not, not as in musical notes, like note notes from us, and then um, yeah, came out with some genius stuff. Come yeah, it was great. we're quite keen to get people in who that's well, just like folk I've admired for a long time musically and get them to do what they do best which is not what I you know just like a wee pointer maybe come in around yeah. this point and then just do what you want and I'm yeah. so delighted with how it's turned out I have been the night shelter and I did automate up the um some of the soundscape during different bits in the track so whilst it's not edited as a one kind of can go the soundscape it, it's quite nice when it just fills out little gaps and stuff you hear the birds come through and this is chapter three in the book called the group and i was quite keen to write songs from different perspectives the mountain so this one is written from the mountain's perspective herself and uh, all the things that she's seen and heard and experienced over the millennia that she's been there and kind of the passage of people through the landscape and searching that's the overarching idea anyway. mm. I think it's amazing how this song's worked out actually because you know this not a lot of words in the verse, is there? No, it's four, <laughs> four. words. In, four, four, four <laughs> words in each verse. Actually, it was much longer, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it twice as long as that, I think, I think before it... you got to a chorus or something? But I think we yeah. chopped it down. Yeah. I have heard we did a fair bit. It's really hard to remember those, those 16, no, 12 words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ringing of guns to that was nice, that. That was, I think that was Mary that thought of that BV. Yeah, the whole thing. Well. Works so well. I just love the way their voices blend, like the three voices. And I have seen the comments. Mary and Grant just worked so well together. 
I think this one's got um, the really rumbly floor tom on it as well, hasn't it? Which, you know, when we were doing the strings, Mary was like, can you turn that off, please? Uh, I can't really hear what I'm doing. And you're not going to have that on there like that, are you, anyway? <laughs> it is, it's probably pulled back a bit since then. The thunder over the mountains. Yes. <laughs> Or our bellies rumbling. By the way, that's a squeaky chair. I'm not farting. Just in case you were. <laughs> Thought it was on the soundscape. <laughs> and I think a lot of the, the. So we actually did the strings down in a different place, didn't we? Just for a day. Um, mm, yeah. in and Harriet Toon, which is great, really cool art space. Mm. Um, which is Matty Folds used to have a, a mm. studio there as well, which is cool. A gorgeous wee space. Oh, Bernie, yeah. we the glass white shiver. This song had probably the most interesting evolution, didn't it? In the store, I can't remember the what the demo was. What was that? Uh, the demo, I'd written a guitar part for it, but it didn't quite... There was something about it that made it a bit busy, I think. Mm. I'd discovered I've got this, this amazing guitar that was made for the project by a great friend of mine called Rory Dowling of Taran Guitars. And from there's a sound hole, as well as being one on the top of the guitar, there's one on the side of the guitar. And it really, you get a lot from it when you play it. But it, your voice also feeds into it. And when I first picked up the guitar, I just sat at home and just discovered this. Because my voice kind of resonated through the guitar. And then just sat and sang through this, this sound hole. And a lot of the hums that create this bed underneath this song water or me singing through from high guitar high yeah and then we kind of looped them up mm. and i sang some as well from mm. and distorted them whilst i buried them <laughs> um, but yeah it's so just sort of layered up and there is a couple of pitch shifting tricks in there just to give it more texture as well which is really quite nice there is some water in there, but it was like being co cold water. We were trying to avoid the mm. plainly obvious thing to do. But I think with all the tracks, we were trying to kind of Gather get a picture, get a sort of snippet of what they were talking about, weren't they? Like in kind of texture and without being too kind of over the top, was it? And this song was originally. Uh, it's one of Nan Shepherd's poems, and it's, it was only two stanzas long, but to me always felt a bit short, short. so I added another three verses. There's Andy coming in with his hums. And, uh, yeah, my Barry White. Yeah, so. <laughs> and yeah, so I, I kind of turned it into, to me it's quite a political song about the power of water can't keep as, a, as a voice and uh, yeah so I had it followed her song structure her poem structure and wrote another three verses it's a lovely melody came really quickly I don't know sometimes they do you just yeah so quick I read it and thought, hmm, this sounds like a hundred like a song. And singing one song. I really wanted to fit it out there. Singing one song alone. Really chuffed with how that one turned out. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. What's the bird then? Oh, I didn't. Come on, bird expert. <laughs> You've put me on the spot now. It's so embarrassing, I don't know. I didn't even hear it. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a chaffinch. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a chaffinch. <laughs> 
It wasn't a duck anyway, that's for sure. It wasn't a duck, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the two you know, chaffinch or a duck? <laughs> yeah, duck, I know what sound a duck makes. Yeah, OK. Yeah. This is uh, track five, Frost and Snow. Again, it's got a kind of crackle, like of ice yes. cracking and this stuff, is, which is, yeah. This features the a field recording by Jez Riley French, who does a lot of, runs courses in the Kengongs every year, and has this incredible, this incredible recording of people walking in the snow. And, uh, yeah. And I was playing about trying to figure out an arrangement for this song and I've got a, a thumb piano kind of recorded that and it because it sound, kind of sounded a bit like the walking and the crunching in the snow and then distorted that leave a backing underneath the track find this is pretty similar to the demo isn't it so you brought yeah you, you did some demos and you were just getting your your logic on um, learning how to use garage band or whatever it was, logic or whatever. Yeah, logic, and right. um, yeah, and so you did have some, yeah, <laughs> messing yeah. You did have quite, um, quite a few kind of more complete demos actually, or down the line demos, and then we got got the word sastrugi into a song, which I feel is a great achievement. I don't I'm even know what that, that one. What what even is that word? I don't. I never um, even knew what. It's, that it's the form of ice or snow that's when there's like big big winds over it, it creates all these amazing ice sculptures. That is sastrugi. So. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just thinking with the demos, we kind of threw them back and forth for a bit, didn't we? And then and then you. Um, well, or maybe, maybe we didn't get even more into them until we met up in the, at Clash Netty. And so quite a lot of the songs, we kind of thrashed out what how they were going to be or chopped them down there and then or reworked little bits as we went along, didn't we, really? Like, I think that this one's very similar to the demo, but I think a lot of them yeah. we... We did change around quite a lot. Um, I remember when we were at Clashnetti and trying to, for some reason, I found it really hard to play that chord, those chords on the two and the five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that track, and you were like, no, no, two and five, like trying to count to count it for me. <laughs> to be ages to get it. It's like it's the simplest two chords, but <laughs> confused me. The studio haze. part the first night that I picked up the guitar from Rory and just sat at my folks house actually and nobody was in and I just sat and played this little little bit and really liked it. So Rory made you, so for other for previous listening club listeners, I think we mm -hmm. talked about the Taran guitars on Martin Simpson's oh, yeah. um, listening club because he uses a Taran um, on a couple of tracks on his last album and um, yeah and uh, so it was made out of a, a piece of wood from a bar was it yeah. from a pub in the Cairngorms somewhere yeah so it, it was made from an old bar shelf that was in a pub called the Fife Arms yeah in Braemar and I went with Rory up to, to go and collect this bit of wood uh, from a friend of ours. From the pub? Oh, right, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, from a friend of ours. <laughs> we didn't go to the pub at all, actually. And I saw this bit of wood and I was thinking, can you make something out of that? It was just like this, you know, you wouldn't, you'd imagine just chucking it in a heap somewhere. Really, yeah. And then the next time I, see, I saw it, it'd been, it was turned into this beautiful guitar. And, yeah, it's, it, Rory thinks it's Scots Pine and possibly the only Scots Pine guitar out there, which is quite, quite amazing, probably over a hundred years old, repurposed into a guitar. Did you do a podcast with Rory? I did, yeah. Yeah, 
So there's a cool podcast series that, um, that Jenny's done that you can check out on all good podcast places. Um, yes, and you've got all sorts of people in there, haven't you? Um, yeah. Rory, the guitar maker, and and between the sun and rose interestingly Lauren McCall hates podcasts but apparently my one my podcast she really loved so there we go I said something she had to say that <laughs> she had to say that didn't she <laughs> who am I kidding yeah. <laughs> it's my favourite track I think oh. the first single first just Grant Anderson on the on the base. So there was a line there, wasn't there? She she's there. Or oh, happened every yeah. single time. Yeah. Originally, and then we decided to take that out and leave some mystery. These yeah. Just giving it away. Just having it. Yeah. Lost from it's kind of the first, the first, the only reference that I made to potentially Nan Shepherd, but it's up to the. The listener to interpret it as they as they wish. <laughs> this one I think always it sounds great loud turned up loud. I really enjoyed singing back and vocals on this. That pedal steel kind of thing is just I think it's just me on a pocket piano just opening the volume or the envelope up on it. She's there. There she is, she's there. Yeah. <laughs> reverse piano. And the bass comes in. Down. Yeah, nice reverse piano chord into that. And down comes the rain. Grant's a fantastic musician, I've known him since I was 12, I think. We went to Alfred Academy together. Oh. Crunchy, rain, rain, rain. <laughs> sang that totally out of tune. It's <laughs> alright, I'll, I'll tune it. And Thanks. <laughs> I think I've gone red. Comes the rain. And into the plants is the next one. Yeah. And the trees, I love these trees. It's another recording, a field recording by Jez. Mm. Really cool. And then you panned it, didn't you? So it from, goes from one ear to the other. Yeah, so it's this like stress, stereo thing going on, yeah. This was so much fun to record this one. Between bedrock and the sky, deep rooted to this place, we are of the soil. And about the, of the silent the power of the plants. There's amazing plants up in the Cairngorms, they're very tiny, a lot of them. It's wild up there, but they're hardy. And the percussion for this one's the piano pedal, isn't it? Yeah, so the kick, kick is actually the piano pedal. So when he goes dugga dugga, is you um, lifting your foot off the pedal, isn't it? very simple to most people. <laughs> not to, not to me. <laughs> not to me. Beautiful strings. 
play a fantastic Pitts part as well. Mm, yeah, Pitts is great. Love that little bird that comes in in that yeah. yellow. There's a cool video, a cool video for this that we had got done just the other day um, by Jim Lockie and uh, yeah, I shall whack the link up, but pretty cool. You're in like a little seed pod or something, you know what I Quite well, indie. I'm pretty happy with that. Like, <laughs> apart from the next one and senses and being. Yeah. Yeah, but being is mostly mostly birds on. But that's true. Point. I think that. I think that's one of my favourite tracks. I reckon. Yeah, it's cool. And then this one was quite. <laughs> Quite a lot of fun, wasn't it? Um, taking all the various sounds and various uh, source recordings of different animals and kind of mm. messing around Mashing with them. Mashing them up. It features um, recordings by Magnus Robb, who's a friend of mine. And yeah, lots of different species, including snipe and ptarmigan and red deer in there as well. Did you come across the Living Mountain? Did you know how I phrased I'd heard of Nan Shepherd a long time ago, and then Will had the book and said, yeah, I should read it. And uh, it took me a while to get around to actually reading it. And then once I did, I was like, oh, this would be an interesting project. Yeah. And I, um, I was keen to be inspired by the book, but not to really use her words, obviously, apart from two tracks that are her poems, so the process of writing, I decided quite early on I wanted to write a song per chapter of the book, and I did like free writing exercises before writing the lyrics, so I'd look at the chapter title and say, in this instance, birds, animals, insects, and I'd write pages and pages of whatever came into my head about those, that topic, and then, and then I'd go and read the chapter. Yeah, so I kind of did that for each chapter. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. There's only one direct lift from her words, apart from those two poems. Voyager passing, leaving with the gloaming. Which is me playing the whistle, this one. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I think we tried to. I'll go through. I've been going through that phase of trying to double up sounds, even though they're not the same instruments, so like with the whistle. Pocket piano, clarinet kind of synth sounds. Not clarinet, but roughly. Um, it's quite nice just having those two textures next to each other. Tree to tree, flitting, chattering, and seeking. There's some bass notes, I think, in, on the Nord, aren't yeah. there? On this one as well. From the mountains pour. Beautiful cello and viola on this. Oops. Kind of passed the melodies back and forward, didn't they? It was all very yeah. just um, Im improv, really. Yeah. Per, for each animal, really. Um, 
down. Not for every animal that's up on the cane but for, okay. for a sample. Distorted the strings a bit towards the end as well. Yeah. Feathers, the tree. And then the dinosaurs are at the end as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. If you think you know what it is, then write it in your uh, write it in the comments. And uh, <laughs> we'll send a Hudson Records prize to the winner <laughs> who nails it of those beasts in the background. <laughs> this next one's um, another adaptation of a, one of Nan Shepard's poems that we actually recorded on the Salt House record, Who Am? This is really stripped back, just, just we got a fire going and so the, the place we were in was a long kind of long house basically um, and it had one big room downstairs and then a couple of bedrooms upstairs and a fire at one end. No internet, I mean you couldn't even get a WhatsApp through. Uh, <laughs> so when we turned up there for eight days, I was thinking, well, what are we going to do for half of it? Because uh, there's no TV, uh, no internet, <laughs> therefore no music. Well, no, we've got some music. Um, and sort of, I had to troll up the hill to get any kind of phone signal. Um, but, uh, yeah, we thought we'd keep this one as kind of blank as possible and we had quite a lot of fires didn't we so we kept the fire going for this one I did put some extra fire on it because the fire wasn't quite fiery enough when we actually got the take and everything <laughs> so yeah I got quite a long yeah, recording where stuck I, it up. yeah I got quite a long recording of a fire that I got going and then <laughs> I went to bed and then woke up thinking oh god I'm gonna have burnt the house down and went back down and it was fine <laughs> Sound like a slide guitar. Mm, yeah. Like, nice just added on a little, a little riff. So I think I've been having some emails with Robert McFarlane recently, and he was asking. I think this name is different, maybe to the. What's the actual poem called? Lies and fires. It's fires. Oh. I think this is the track he meant. He wondered whether it was still on the album because the name had changed or something. But he was, had a lot of praise for it. And the Salt House version is very different, isn't it? It's like massive. <laughs> and I think that was the other reason Ewan for keeping, was allowed to, keeping this small. Yeah. Slowly. Ewan was allowed to use his electric guitar that day. Yeah. wasn't it? I enjoyed the, the recording, just being in that house in winter. We did a skate for a day, Cold. for a morning, didn't we? We went and had to watch the rugby. Yeah. Did we go and have an Indian at your parents and then and then yeah. uh, watched uh, England, South Africa in the World Cup final? Because I had to go and watch it. It's a wee treat. As a treat, <laughs> except it wasn't a treat, was it? Let's face it, it wasn't for me anyway. Star or two, and all the moves. Star or two, moves slowly.
good crackly fire. Yeah. A lot of these um, samples that we recorded when we were in Clashnetti are going to be part of the, the show that will be on tour next year. It was meant to be on tour this year, but it's been rescheduled now, so lots of field samples and different sounds being triggered. And, and a video backdrop. Down from the mountain yeah. we'll positive experience of sleeping on the mountain and the space that it affords you to breathe and be rather than Almost being on a device or doing bits of admin and uh, and magic of it. The ancient Had an amazing day up in the Cairngorms with Fight Shona Thompson who's the filmmaker. He's been involved in the project and Robin Spice who's the same and we camped by Boat of Garten and there were, it was a beautiful evening and we saw the moon rise and there were bats flying around over the loch and just one of those incredible evenings. Woken up at three o'clock in the morning with a family of tawny owls over the tent. <laughs> the pulsing here of the strings. Yeah. I you think know, kind of got that just from putting that harmonium on the, the pump organ. And... Which lends to announce a new day. Ooh. I don't think I've ever put so many oohs on an album. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever put any oohs on an album, in fact. But I think they all work. Yeah, definitely work well. The interesting one with that is figuring out how they work live, I think. How it moves. Mm. Especially if it's just you and your guitar, like, Dreaming. soon yeah. find a whole song of I've got probably a while to figure that yeah, one out. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> eight to nine months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Damn it. <laughs> There's a lovely bit in here that Sua does on the cello. Or maybe it's a bit later on. And short, short now. Second time round, I think she does it. Second time. Lost is found. Wake with an empty mind. Still unconscious of the In the, in the booklet on the CD or the LP of the presumably it's like uh, an eclipse or something like the kind of, it looks like the moon but it's the sun as well or maybe it's not maybe it's just the moon who did the photos yeah, inside so Anne Campbell a pal of mine Anne is a brilliant photographer she did the photos in the booklet and on the inside of the, the sleeve and then Hannah Bailey did the front cover image. Mm. Just like stunning, stunning stuff. Yeah, the front cover's brilliant I think. Mm. 
That's the that's the image that oh, Andy's yeah, talking yeah. about. Can't tell, is it a moon or an eclipse? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Looks like an eclipse. And this song Yeah, just wanting to write like a dreamy song about a lovely day up on the plateau and or a journey through the mountain and uh, I got so far with it and then like got a little bit stuck so I sent it to my mum like who's a brilliant poet and writer and on the edge of time a little perfection to it and yeah, like I'm really delighted with how it turned out like gold watching through another's eyes hear it see it taste it Daunted about writing about the senses mm. of the going gorms, I have to say. We, feel the yeah, we changed the we changed around the words in the chorus a fair few times, didn't we? Before mm. the running and the pulling, and what else was there? Yeah. Smelling. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> sniffing of the wild or something. Um, <laughs> And I think this one was the one where we were most, well, I was most concerned that it didn't become a. Bend your ear to the silence. Too kind of. Tune into the silence itself. Kind of, I don't know, like some kind of welcome to Scotland advert parody. Yeah. Except if welcome to Scotland wanted to use it, then we can have a discussion. That would be fine. Yeah, that would be fine. We're open to having a conversation about that. But we were just trying to be. <laughs> Not too kind of cheesy. Basically. We didn't want to get the tart yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Feel the pulling of the wild. Hear it, see it, taste it. I could see this on a car advert or something. Yeah. Feel <laughs> the running of the wild. I'm driving a Range Rover off into the distance. <laughs> God no. <laughs> Might happen. An electric Range Rover. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet honeyed heather, <laughs> nectar of heather, buzzing with rambled fly. Another one it's really hard to remember the words of for some reason. It's a really nice line that, the nectar of heather. <laughs> well done, <Bob>. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> for the burn with your feet bare, for the burn with your feet bare, where water caresses stone. For the burn with your bare feet, for the burn with your bare feet, a step in the unknown. Here it Cold, so we'd have to put it on for a little bit yeah. while we made a cup of tea and then... Yeah. I think the heating's probably on a few takes, to be honest. Where we yeah, forgot probably. <laughs> and Hudson. And Hudson. Yeah, your mum's got mentioned in a few reviews, hasn't she? The flicker yeah. of the shadow for this. filling the can. Gonna over a few bottles of wine, I think. Some PRS. <laughs> the flickering shadows. <laughs> yeah. The flickering shadows. Aurora. Oh, well, yeah. MC Kids. Life. Hopefully, one day, Andy. <laughs> Here it, see it, taste it. Feel the pulling of the. So, do you know what Nan's publisher run? Um, is it Nan's stepson? Yeah, so uh, her manager's adopted daughter, sort of adopted daughter's son. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what they think about the album more? 
Like a way yeah, I think he literally emailed me as soon as he got his copy saying he was delighted with it and I think this was what he said this was one of his favourite ones. Oh, okay. I catch my breath like a wave held back. This is a line from the book. I catch my breath and the life pours back. So much sustain. Is that a <laughs> Is that a car in the um, background of your house? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't remember that th truck being on the album. <laughs> yeah, it might have been here, I think. There was no road anywhere near it, so... No. Yeah, I know the piano had amazing sustain on yeah. it, didn't it? In fact, that's what's the start of this next track. Mm. It's just the piano pedal being released. Yeah. my other favourite, although to be honest I love, but really delighted with them all, like yeah, it's not it's not a duffer in there no, there isn't, there isn't a skipper search to find out what's real grasping and gathering I really enjoyed singing this one as well, I got really into it and a discontent did it like a really close mic yeah direction a discontent, a misdirection. Again, it's using the pedal as a as, a, as percussion. That sounds massive. It's just mm. a piano chord and a pedal. And a bit of, and a bit of pocket Joy piano came, coming in. Right, yeah. To being where we walk. Two note special. Is <laughs> and gifted from the mountain, awakening and honesty. I think I spent quite a long time thinking I needed to make things complicated to make them interesting and past some writing times, but you can do it in a simple way. Yeah. I think it's really effective. Yeah. Dispersing. So 
such a fun thing to go into the like to haul up to that house and have that time so it felt really relaxed and creative and yeah it was it was great to great thing to do I really enjoyed it I thought it could have been like going into a studio can sometimes be stressful but it wasn't at no, all it was just really chilled yeah lots of cups of tea lots of tea lots, lots of good food lots of fires yeah yeah and going to bed quite early really I think because there wasn't all else to do yeah uh, yeah, <laughs> which is good. Quite a lot of wine, I think. And then waking up at three to <laughs> oh yeah, there's gin a few, and tonics. A few glasses of wine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Five, five yeah. p.m. gin. Bit of bit of dog walking. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> well done. Very enjoyable. Yeah, well done, Andy. You made it. A, it was brilliant. I loved it, and uh, it's really nice to listen back to it again and feel really proud of it. It's great. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for asking me.